I think the solitary interests me. But in part, I have been a lonely person. Certainly the spy interests me because it's, it's the solitary place in, in the collective position. That's to say he's representing some kind or supposedly representing some kind of ideology uh, alone. He's what Edward Crankshaw recently called, and I twice quoted, uh, the lonely decider. And uh, this was why, I suppose, in the first place, yes, I felt an affinity with the spy figure. Well, firstly, of course, they're all looking for it. And all of them, in a sense, reach a dead end. That is true. But if one's trying to apportion wickedness, whether on the western side or the eastern side, I think one does have to remember as a reality about intelligence services that during the balance of terror, they're not only the worst weapons we have, socially speaking, but they're also the best because to the balance of terror belongs a balance of knowledge. It's no earthly good building up a massive deterrent if you can't do it uh, as against the knowledge you have about the enemy's deterrent. It's equally no good building up deterrent if you can't let them know you're doing it. So that it's no earthly good taking intelligence services by themselves and trying to allocate moral good or ill. You might just as well take the army or the air force or rocket designers or missile system designers. We're all in the same case, or as Smiley would say, we're all in the same war. It felt like betrayal but it had a voluptuous quality, as it did for my character. A voluptuous quality in the sense that this was a necessary sacrifice of morality. And that is a very important component of, of what makes people spy, what attracts them. There is something delicious about being told now, um, we're going to have to burgle that house tonight. <laughs>